also use as <laughs> Hey Sidu, I've got a hole in the side of my hull. <laughs> How did it happen, Adam? Uh, Michelle put her leg through it. Eight out of ten. Five out of ten. Ten out of ten. Look at that perfect dolphin arc. How does that song go? I'm living like, whoa, nearly fell in. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to another episode. This one is gonna be a banger. I am joined by Michelle Salt, two-time Paralympian and fellow BRP ambassador. Obviously you guys know that I am a Sea-Doo brand ambassador. Well, Michelle here, she is a Skidoo brand ambassador. So she rides snowmobiles. Tell everybody why you're here and what you're doing on this trip. I am traveling across North America, finding fully accessible adventure spots, but also doing some pretty amazing things like riding sea -Doo with Adam. So we are going to head to Catalina today. You've never been before, right? No. But you've seen pictures. Yeah. So as you noticed, we are joined by a uh, third appendage here. Uh, so this is your sport leg, right? This is my sport leg. Okay. This is my everyday walking <laughs> leg. Check it out. Makes a good drink holder. So this one's your walking leg. This is my everyday walking And leg. how much was this leg? Uh, about 80,000 Canadian for my whole Setup. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and then this one is pretty badass because this yeah. has got fox shocks in it. It does. It has a fox shock in the knee and one in the ankle giving me ankle articulation. I use this for, you know, snowboarding, snowmobiling, wake surfing, kind of anything that uh, requires a shock. So let's get you on it and okay. then we'll run through a quick safety briefing and I'll see you guys in just a sec. So I have something new to show you guys as well. If you've watched the episode where I went to Havasu, you'll know that I put on the running lights and the nav lights on the sea -Doo. Well now, I have some extra fog lights because when I'm out there in the middle and a big fog bank rolls in, that is gonna be super handy for making sure that I'm visible for anything else. I've heard of instances where people have literally almost crashed into the side of container ships because the visibility was that bad. So you know my motto, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Also you <laughs> Hey Sidu, I've got a hole in the side of my hull. <laughs> How did it happen, Adam? Uh, Michelle put her leg through it. So if for any reason we get separated, you are gonna pull this out, you're gonna attach it to your arm, okay. and then you're gonna throw this in the water. It's gonna activate, there's gonna be a strobe light, and help will come within probably 30 minutes. I have one that's mounted to my life jacket itself. Okay. Uh, you have the one that throws in the water. To start and stop the ski, you push this. Obviously, because this is a jet drive, if you don't have throttle, you don't have steering. So if you need to maneuver, always be on the throttle. Because if you're going towards something and you let off the gas and you turn the handlebars, it won't do anything. If you want to connect your phone, listen to music, we do have speakers so you can jam out. Want to go see some dolphins? Yeah. Yeah? Ready? Yeah. All right, this is your radio. Kay. So we're going to be on channel 69, which is... Uh, a pleasure channel, according <laughs> according to the Coast Guard. I didn't make that up. If you do want to hail the Coast Guard, then you go to channel 16. So okay. use the up and down arrows. Okay. But other than that, you're just gonna leave it on 69 and then that I way we can pleasure. talk to each other. Okay. So this is gonna be Michelle's first time riding a Sea-Doo in a long time, and also the first time out on the open ocean on one. You guys know, safety, number one for me. Uh, she's got all the gear she needs. She's got her e so we can locate her should anything go wrong. She has a radio, she has extra fuel, she has food, she has water, all the things that you need. So if you are gonna do this crossing, don't just go out there with your sea -Doo and your mobile phone. That's not enough. Take a radio with you. Make sure you've got downloaded offline maps if you don't have a GPS, because the open ocean is no joke. It's a lot of fun, but you just gotta be safe. There you go, that right there is a molar molar. He's huge. I don't know if you can quite make him out right here, see the white side of him. So that right there, he's probably about six feet from the top of that wing to the bottom of that wing or fin. So yeah, that's what they do. They come up to the top and they lay flat like that. Hi bud. This guy is so inquisitive. Look at him. I think there's another sunfish over there. I keep seeing a fin pop up. It's either that or a shark. So one of the whale watching boats actually the other day spotted a juvenile great white out here. Oh, you were 
Word. While we're out here hanging out with Sunfish, I want to take a second to talk to you about Magic Mine. This is a little wonder shop that I've added into my daily routine, and boy, has it made a difference to my overall sense of well being. This contains nootropics, which are great for focus. Uh, it also helps with things like memory recall. So, for example, when I'm talking to camera, I would sometimes find myself struggling to think of a word. And since I've been taking this, I can't tell you the last time that I struggled to think of a word that I wanted to use. And I know that sounds very simple, but it's so frustrating. It also contains things like lion's mane mushrooms and cordyceps mushrooms. And if you're a longtime subscriber of the channel, you'll know how much of an advocate I am of mushrooms for all of their health benefits. It also contains things like vitamin C, vitamin D, echinacea, great for your immune system. And it also contains adaptogens, which help you relax. Now, I'm very fortunate. I get to do things that allow me to chill and just be mellow a lot of the time. So I personally don't struggle with anxiety or stress or anything like that. But if you are the type of person that finds yourself prone to that, I've heard great things about these introduced into your daily routine to just level you out. That's the best way to describe it. You're not gonna take one of these and feel that like rush of caffeine like you'd get from an energy drink and all of a sudden be wired. It's just this like overall heightened sense of well-being. I absolutely love them. You know I wouldn't recommend anything that I wouldn't spend my money on and that I don't stand behind. They also have a 60-day money-back guarantee, so if you take them and you don't find that it works for you, let them know and they'll give you money back. No questions asked, which is great. That really shows how much they believe in their product. So if you are interested in introducing Magic Mind into your daily routine, I will leave a link in the description below. And if you use my discount code, which I'll put on the screen and down there in the description, then you will get a discount on your first order. And uh, I haven't had mine today, so cheers and let's get back to the video. Ooh, it's like, it's like a bit citrusy, like a bit earthy, a little bit sweet. Mm, nice. Okay, where is Michelle? Here she is. There's the mother of the car. So these are my doll friends. This is a real treat because these are bottlenose dolphins. So have you ever seen the movie Flipper? Yeah. That's what these are. I was so scared to hit them. No, that trust me, you won't hit them. They know exactly what they're doing. And right now they've got over a thousand feet of water to go down into if they want to. One of the common misconceptions when you ride with dolphins like this is that you're forcing them to do it or it's dangerous or whatever. Now obviously number one, sea doos don't have propellers underneath, so the hull is completely flat. There's nothing for the dolphins to get hit by or caught in or anything like that. Secondly, right now, they have a thousand feet of water below us that they could be in, but they choose to be three feet off the front of the ski. So as long as you ride consistently in a straight line at a constant speed, taking it easy, you have no concern about hurting these and you can 100% enjoy the experience. What are you getting? 
so many options. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, so we're here at Cafe Metropole, one of my favorite spots out on the island. Gonna get some food and then uh, I think I'm gonna rent a golf cart. You wanna do that and go and have a look around? So we're gonna rent a golf cart and then I'm gonna take Michelle on a little tour around the island, get to see some of the views. Obviously, if you go up there, then you get a beautiful view of the whole place. And now that the sun is out, it's gonna be perfect. Oh yeah, veggie stack, sweet potato fries, wish they were real fries, but you know, whatever. What do we got? Oh, tuna melt. Tuna melt? Yeah. Good? Yeah. Just what the doctor ordered? Definitely. So we are golf karting. I just went and picked this up. Michelle's doing a bit of retail therapy back where we got some lunch. And we are gonna go for a cruise around the island. She's never been here before. So I'm gonna show her the best view of all of Avalon. Uber for Michelle. <laughs> Picking up the strays. So welcome to the guided tour of Catalina. Mm -hmm. This is Adam's guided car tours. Ooh, I'll take you later. Uh, thank you. Hi. Um, So all of this is the industrial side of Avalon. So you've got timber yard here, you've got desalination plant down there, power. There's actually a quarry further around. So yeah, this is sort of the ugly part of the island. And they do a great job because they keep it tucked around the corner. So you really don't see it as you approach Avalon or obviously when you're in Avalon at all. And it takes driving out here into the countryside to actually see this part of the island. But we're headed that way for an even better view. Pretty steep. <laughs> Engine that good. Come on. Come on. Come on. You got it. You got it. Oh no, we got another one. Oh. Uh oh. Yeah, look at that. Whoa, look at that truck. He's done us. He's done us. God, he's so fast. He's a freak. He's a freak. He's so fast. There you go, and that ends the tour. Um, tip, tips are welcome. Okay. Very tip, tips are yeah. tips are greatly appreciated mm -hmm. yeah. for no. all of our hard work. <laughs> you swear Thank you. you. It's a nice one. You can swear if you want. Thank you. That's the oh, winner. Can I get that on one in one of the small cones, please? Thank you. Um, oh my goodness. Thank you so much. You <laughs> Thank guys you. Have a nice day. Oh, fuck me. I there. Oh my god, that was so close. My heart literally dropped. <laughs> I would have been so sad. What's the uh, rating on the ice cream? You know what? It's pretty close to a 10. Really? I know. I give it an 8. Well, that's not close to a 10. Yes, it is. It's 20% away from a 10. Mm. Close to a 10 is like a 9.5. I don't know. Saying eight is close to 10 is like saying, I don't know, something else that isn't the same. <laughs> so as I said in the beginning, Michelle is a two-time Paralympian. So tell everybody about your accident and how you ended up as an amputee. So I was riding my motorcycle on a beautiful sunny day, going up a hill, lost control, going 120 kilometers an hour, hit the guardrail head first, did cartwheels in there and hit the guardrail again. Upon impact, I broke almost every bone in both my legs, many of which were compound. Um, broke my pelvis, my hips, L4, L5 vertebrae, right cup, clavicle, punctured lung, bruised my spleen, and when I broke my right femur in two places, it actually severed my femoral artery, so I was bleeding out. I got very lucky, um, bled out for 23 minutes, which is very unheard of. They weren't able to tourniquet uh, because of the, the way the bones were broken. But yeah, push the doors, 23 minutes. Um, was on life support for seven days, needed 28 units of blood, which is three times what my body holds. In the hospital for five months, and you know, part of all of the surgeries that I went through was the amputation of my right leg, quite high above the knee, I'm about 12 inches above the knee. And you were talking to me about the difference between being an above knee amputee versus below knee amputee, yeah. and how it's so much more difficult being an above knee amputee because you don't have that knee joint, which is the thing that allows you to walk more comfortably and 
do a lot of things, right? Yeah. This isn't the knee that you came across with. This is a different leg, right? This is your expensive leg. Yeah, so this is a microprocessor, essentially a bionic knee. So it knows my gait pattern. I walk heel to toe and it swings for me, allowing me to use less energy when I walk. It also has cool features going down hills, kind of slowly bends, mimicking a real knee. It's got cycling mode that releases all of the resistance. So it's nice and free swing. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's, you pay for what you get, really. You wake up in intensive care. You don't know what's happened and the doctor tells you that they've had to amputate your leg. What, what does that feel like? So I was in induced coma for those seven days and apparently I was awake when I went into my, my amputation surgery, but I hadn't remembered, you know, being in that coma had um, caused some amnesia. But yeah, I, you know, found out the day after I came off life support, or maybe it was the day of, and the doctor comes in and he's telling me about how his neighbors, you know, missing two legs and he drives and he goes to university. I'm like, cool story, bro. I'm like, why are you telling me this? And so they, you know, they explained that they had to amputate. I pretty much completely separate the leg off. You know, they, they, they tried. They took a, a vein from this leg and, and put it in the other leg, but it just didn't take. So I think for me, I had a supportive family that was sitting by my side constantly saying like you're gonna do big things with your life and so that fire was already fueled and it was within hours and I'm like I'm one of the Paralympics I'm gonna be a one-legged fitness model if you had a message then for somebody out there who is perhaps struggling with motivation not necessarily because they've had a life-changing injury but just in general like what gets you out of bed in the morning what makes you want to achieve your goals and what do you think people should do to have that same fire in their belly? Yeah, I think for me, there's definitely a, a couple things that keep me going. You know, if I almost died. I, I should have bled to death and I didn't. So it's just a leg at the end of the day, right? I'm still breathing and like, look where we are. You know, this is the life that I have chose to live because of that. You know. Even when times are tough, I, I tell myself this isn't this isn't forever. You know, it's 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 hard now, but I'm not going to feel like this or you know be in this much pain forever and to just carry on. One of my favorite quotes is that when you feel your worst and you try your hardest, that's when you gain the most. So if you guys have any excuses whatsoever for why you aren't going out there and living your best life, take a page out of Michelle's book and. Find some motivation, find some inspiration, do something to change for the better. And trust me, you are gonna absolutely love yourself for it. And everyone around you is gonna love you too. And also surround yourself with supportive people. I think that's super important, yeah, is ditch people that don't support you, ditch people that aren't there to be your hype man or woman or gender fluid, whatever whatever hype person you'd like to be. And really just appreciate you for all of your efforts and everything you do find those people and keep them in your life. And anybody else, let them go. They can go and do their own thing. All right, talking doing our own thing. Do you wanna go and see some sea lions? Yeah. All right, we're gonna get back on the skis. We're gonna head over there. Couple of quick adjustments to the sports leg. We're putting it into sea do mode now. Uh, we've also added on a boot because um, it made a bit of a mess inside here, but that's fine. We can replace that. But it is definitely a lot warmer than it was when we came over. Whew, I'm a sweaty boy right now. Well, goodbye, Catalina. That was a lot of fun. What's up, boaty people? It is now time to go and find the sea lions. There's a beach around the corner that I've only been to once before, but it's where all of the sea lions go and hang out. And the water, if you can believe it, is even more gorgeous than this. Look at that color change. the water here yeah. it just turns to this amazing turquoise so can you see look how Catalina is sheltered or this side of Catalina is sheltered because look at all of the white caps out there where the wind is blowing 
and then look here it's all completely flat so catalina just acts as a big shield for the channel i seriously i can't get over the color of this water it's incredible it, it looks like we're in the bahamas and what's crazy is the way that it changes to the deep blue over there and it's always like this i don't know why i'm not sure why this one section gets this color but it's beautiful but I nearly ran him over. Oh my God, that was terrifying. So I was just flat out and then literally 50 feet in front of me, a fin pops up. There's this guy. Woo, buddy, that was terrifying. It nearly made me fall off. I like swerved to avoid him. Here is another Mola Mola. Yeah, you've got to be so observant when you're out here. <laughs> you never know when you might run over a prehistoric saucer fish. Hello everyone, hello! Oh, look at the little baby. This guy is sent, look at him. <laughs> They're all just like, hello, whoa, that was a good one. Yo! Eight out of 10, five out of 10, 10 out of 10. Look at that perfect dolphin arc. Hello everyone. Thanks for coming to say hi. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's stuff like this that makes the 10 miles in the middle that sucked totally worth it. On the way over to this pot of dolphins, I almost ran over another Mola Mola that was like just off to the side. So they are everywhere right now in the water. So if you're one of the boaters out here or you ride Sea Doos, PWCs out here, just be careful because they are everywhere. How does that song go? I'm living like, whoa, nearly fell in. <laughs> That's what you get for being cocky. I was like, lay back like, oh, this is great. And then wave it inside of me. I nearly rolled in. What a div. All right, we've got ourselves a whale. Not sure what type, but it's here. There you go. Tail. 
Yeah. There we go, Catalina and back. Ooh, just in the nick of time, because I am starving hungry. And also, I want a beer. And also, I've got no fuel. So, we did everything perfectly there. That was an unbelievable day of marine sightings. I mean, we saw whales, we saw dolphins, we saw mola mola, we saw everything. Awesome. All right, guys, well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. You sure? Are you going to come back and do it again? We'll see. Okay. To All be right. determined. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. If you aren't subscribed, please subscribe because I'd love to see you here again. And uh, most importantly, until next time, remember, don't know anything I wouldn't do. See ya.